Hello and welcome back to Inside the USFL, a podcast giving you an inside look at a professional startup football league from someone on the inside. Uh, Jordan McRae, Birmingham Stallion Center is with me. I am Zach Bruner. And again, coming off another win, uh, winning week, obviously Stallions are 4-0. How is it going? How is your Monday so far? Uh, it's going good, man. Um, not the prettiest win, but any win in this, in this league is going to be a good one. Uh, enjoying my day off and uh, is ready to hit the ground running next week. Looking forward to Philly. Yeah, it wasn't the prettiest game, I guess. It was another close game, as pretty much every USFL game has been so far. Mm-hmm. Um, from your standpoint, talking about inside the trenches and stuff, it was definitely a game you guys were tested. I mean, there was no doubt about it. Uh, coming into the game, you guys had given up three sacks, I believe, the entire year. You guys gave up four sacks in this game. Mm-hmm. And then on top of that, running lanes weren't exactly there for a lot of it. Running was a little bit tough, except for with, uh, you know, Muku got to get out a little bit on some zone reads. But were they giving you anything specifically that were giving you guys trouble? Or what do you think it was that uh, caused you guys a little bit of adversity in this game? Um, a lot of it was self-inflicted. Um yeah, we gave up four four sacks this past game. It's technical issues, and then and then uh, one of them was on a screen. Um, they read the screen pretty well. It wasn't a way for Alex to throw the ball away, so guys were already downfield. So just just had to eat the ball. And um, a lot of it is, is things that we can fix. But uh, we'll give credit; they were they were a good defense and a good defensive line. And um, we just got to keep getting better every week. And uh, that was a good test for us. I'm glad we got it in the beginning of the season, so we can keep getting better. Yeah, they're definitely a good defensive line. They're a big defensive line. They definitely got their hands up, tip balls, and yeah. obviously affecting balls. Uh, a lot of people don't really understand this part of the game. So when you have a big defensive line like that, and they are affecting passes, uh, what do you specifically do to get their hands down and stuff like that? Uh, try to – and for tackles and people on the outside, it's probably easier to cut You know, when you have those chances to cut. Because even if you miss a cut, a guy's still going to protect his knee, so his hands are going to be down. And then in the interior, you just got to take the fight to them, uh, make sure that they're worried more about the block than getting their hands up. So um, there's a lot of different techniques you can use, but sometimes, I mean, those guys are professionals as well. They're going to make plays. You just got to make sure that you're making more of them. For sure. And obviously, you guys had some struggles before the game even started. You guys had a bunch of illnesses this entire week. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of guys out sick. So what were practices like this week? Were you guys basically like trying to quarantine away from the people who were sick? How much yeah. on-field work were you guys even able to do? So going into the week, we knew um, it, everything started happening on Monday. Um, it was seven guys total. And uh, Coach Coach Holtz was telling us, look, we we're only going to be going into the game with 38 guys anyways. That's how many guys you're allowed to have active. There's not going to be a woe is me attitude. We're just going to play with the guys that we that we drafted. Everybody here was drafted. Everybody here was right here to make plays. So now that some guys weren't going to be able to, other guys are going to have to step up. And he's just letting everybody know that it's not one guy that has to do all the heavy lifting. 38 guys lifting one thing instead of one guy lifting thir- something 38 times is going to be a lot easier. So uh, that's really the mindset we went into with this week. Uh, and everybody was just taking up the next man up attitude. So. But what were practices like then if people were sick? Was it even more stuff on air than you were used to? Was it more like classroom classroom like study work this week or what? It was really the same type of practice. The only thing was that we didn't go in pads this week. Sure. Yeah, so okay. it, it was the same type of setup. Um, maybe a little bit less plays because the guys are going to have to be taking more reps. But um, same setup, about two-hour practices every day. Uh, walk through um, two days before the game, then the really like real walk through the day before the game. And uh, really, really a similar practice schedule. Only only day that was different was um, Tuesday because that was the day when we were we all had to get tested that day and figured out. So we couldn't practice that morning because we were testing all morning and then practice in the evening. And um, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday went the same exact way as usual. Okay. And one of the people who were sick was Jay Marr, who has been quarterback the past few weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, and whether this was 
the reason for the decision or not. Uh, Coach Holt said before the game, obviously, Jamar didn't really get to practice much this week. Mm -hmm. Uh, Alex Magoo, the week one starter who had been out with an ankle injury, he got all the reps. Mm -hmm. And he obviously was a starter for this week. So for you as a center and just as an offensive line, how much does that affect you? You went from one quarterback to another. A couple weeks later, you're going back to the original one. Does mm-hmm. it change much for you in terms of cadence, in terms of blocking or anything? No, not – well, with, with those two guys, not really. Uh, both of those are true uh, – Jamar and Alex are true professionals. Uh, even when Alex wasn't playing, he was approaching the game like he was. In the first week when Jamar wasn't a starter, he was approaching the game as if he was. So um, it's really not mu- not that much of a difference. The cadence is – is all the same, and um, we know that we have a, a, a great chance to win with both of those guys back there. So um, we weren't too worried about that. Okay. And then in terms of the actual game, obviously you guys played the Tampa Bay Bandits, ended up winning 16-10, a uh, low-scoring game. Uh, there's multiple reasons for a low-scoring game, but it was a struggle again in the first half, not a lot of movement. Mm-hmm. And the touchdown drive that ended up happening in the first half uh, you kind of got – you drew a personal foul yeah. on one, kind of kept the drive going a little bit. Yeah. Uh, what happened there? Were you jawing at him and got him to do it, or was it kind of unprovoked? Um, n- Not really jawing too much. I got I got a good good grip on him, and I was trying to finish probably a little bit after the whistle as well. He didn't like that too much, and it just – it's part of football, man. It happens. But, uh, you know, I kept my composure. I'm glad I did, and uh, – Help my team move the ball a little bit, so that's that's always a good thing. So, yeah, yeah, hundred percent. It ended up being a big play on the drive, and then obviously yeah. the drive ended with an Alex Magoo uh, quarterback sneak for a touchdown. Mm. On that play, he kind of broke down on the sideline to one of the reporters that he had the option to pass it if he wanted to, mm. and he decided he was going to sneak it the entire time. But uh, for him and for you, uh, does he? Is he making that read to throw it or pass it or to throw it or run it? And does he do anything different for you? Or is it regardless, you're going to show a run and try to blow it up in the middle regardless? Oh, yeah. Regardless. I mean, I I, I don't know uh, what what he's reading. I just hear quarterback sneak. And that's all that's all I'm taught to do is, is make sure I get the nose off the ball and make sure I get the snap straight to the quarterback. So uh, he has a lot of going on in his head. So I don't even want to try and think what he's reading. So I just snap yeah. the ball and do my job, and then he'll he'll do his. I'm glad it worked out. Yeah, and obviously, big play in the game. That was the only touchdown for you guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, kind of the hero a little bit was you guys' kicker, too, Brandon Aubrey, who's been really, really good this entire season. He has been. Uh, for, for those who don't know, this is his first taste of football. He was a, a soccer player, played in the MLS, played at Notre Dame, I believe, soccer in specialists are obviously a little bit different in terms of their relationship in the locker room and stuff anyways but it, with him he's truly getting dropped into this football culture uh what's it been like with him there has is he fitting in pretty well or what's your thoughts with Brandon Aubrey so far uh yeah I mean he does a job he's only missed one kick um made it pin guys deep like all our specialists are doing a great job snapper punter and kicker uh, those guys are, you know, they always hang out in a group. You can always tell the specialists from any team, like even mm-hmm. other teams that walking around, they always stay in their little three group, a uh, three man group. And, uh, but, uh, all our guys have been, have been playing really well and, uh, they're gelling well too. You know, they're not, uh, not standoffish. Like like to get in the mix a little bit when it comes to conversations in the locker room and all that kind of stuff as well. So it's been a good mix. That's definitely good. And obviously starting this week, there was a bit of a rule change. And BSN, TG, BGG on Reddit uh, wants to know if you are in favor. What's your overall thoughts on the new rule of a running clock in the first and third quarters of the game now? Um, I just know now that it means that every every drive that we have is 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 going to be important, like even yeah. more important because they're not going to have as many snaps in the game. Like uh, we watched film yesterday and. We had nine plays in the first quarter. So it's like you got to make uh, – he was just, it's just the emphasis of now knowing that we don't have as much time as you think you're going to have. We got to make every possession that we have count. So um, 
it just, I guess it's giving you a little bit more sense of urgency. 100%. And, you know, when you guys are finishing drives, scoring, like, I, I don't have the math here. I would assume you guys are pretty well up there in terms of drives ending in points, not just mm-hmm. because you guys are finishing in the end zone, but also because of uh, your kicker, like we were talking about before. He's missed one kick mm-hmm. the entire year. So you guys are at least built for this. Yeah. You're not really throwing away drives, which is good. Mm-hmm. Um, Albert Mondego wants to know if you've ever partied with Scooby Wright, and if so, how intense was that? Uh, yeah, actually, after we uh, after we won the New Orleans game, a couple of the guys went out down here, and uh, man, Scooby's a a great guy to be around, cool guy to be around, uh, very excitable guy. So it was a uh, yeah. it, it was it was a good time, man. It was a good time. Uh, he broke out the uh, shark dog this past game, told the <laughs> satellite reporter that's a spirit animal. So, <laughs> yeah, definitely a unique guy. Definitely. Good energy is infectious. A guy like that, does it kind of infect sort of, you know, maybe not the word to use after an illness breakout on the team. But, uh, like, like, do you guys feed off of it even on offense too? Oh, definitely, yeah. All those guys on, on, on defense. Um Gates wasn't able to play this week, but whenever guys on defense make a play, they're all excited. We're all excited because at the end of the day, we want to see everybody do well. And the defense doing well means that we're in position to do well. And us scoring a lot of points is going to help the defense, like, take some pressure off of them so they can play fast. And um, you kind of just build off each other, man. That's really what's, what um, what's good about our team is uh, we're a close-knit group. And, and when guys make plays, we're all excited and we're ready to go make our play now. Yeah, and you guys have been playing well, executing well. BSN also wants to know, uh, do you think that there would have been better execution early on in the season had you had more uh, more of a preseason, more of a training camp down there? Or, I mean, another way to look at it, do you think you guys are executing better now than you were early on in the season? Uh, well, one, yes. To answer the first part of the question, yes. If, if there's a longer preseason, I think uh, – we will be a little bit more prepared, at least offensively. Like defense is, is a little bit ahead of the curve when it comes to the preseason and the beginning of the season. But um, I think we're finally starting to catch our stride a little bit offensively. There's obviously a lot that we can do better. And just um, – but a lot of it is very fixable. And I feel like that's a good part about our offense. So it's going to hit the ground running to make sure that we can keep building. And uh, it's, it's always good to build on things and correct things with the W. So – you try to keep that trend up as well. When you had a past couple of weeks like you guys have had, obviously you finished with wins, so it is what it is. But you haven't been running the ball super well. What do you do in terms of from the offensive line point of view? Uh, it, what is it that you can sharpen up? Is it communication? Is it just knowing how to read the defense where people need to go? Or what are you trying to fix this week going into week five then? Uh, really just communicating a little bit better, like over communicating. Uh, a lot of the times four guys are on the same page and then one guy wasn't. And, and for us to be successful, all five have to be working as one. So um, just over communicating, knowing knowing the guy you're going to be playing next to, how he plays and how you can complement his play style and vice versa. And that's just a lot of things that is going to keep getting better with practice. And uh, that's what we're going to emphasize a little bit more this week. Uh, Sire Thomas wants to know, first off, before we talk football, how are you liking Birmingham as a city so far? Oh, uh, it's been pretty cool. Um, I didn't have super high expectations, so um, I've been uh, surprised, presently surprised. So um, the people here are super nice. Uh, they love the Stallions right now. Like anytime I bring up or who I play for, they talk about they've already been to a game or something like that. So it's been a pretty good uh, atmosphere, and I, I like it. Yeah, I think the fans are definitely showing out for you guys. I think it's been pretty mm-hmm. obvious that they're on board with professional football in Birmingham. I think yeah. that's cool. Uh, he also wants to know if you have a favorite play that you've made so far this season. Um, Favorite play? Probably um, the block to help Jamar score in the first game or – the block to help Marlon score in uh, versus New Orleans. Probably, yeah, one of those, one of those two. Yeah, big plays, and obviously, 
Mm. Uh, we talked about the Marlon one last week. Definitely a good play. Uh, destroyed number three on that play. So good, good for you, bad for him. Not a good film to watch on Monday morning. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bobby Sampson, I wants to know, uh, I'll phrase it this way. You, you and I have talked before about your experiences playing arena league, indoor league. Mm-hmm. And uh, I mean, people watching it can tell it's a different type of football, but maybe people don't truly understand. So he wants to know what was it like playing arena, but how is it different then to uh, XFL, AAF and USFL then? Uh, well, first playing arena is super fun. It's a, a game tailored towards the offense. So it's a lot of points scored. Fans are going to love it. Um, the wall makes things more exciting because people go over it. People run into it. Um, it's, it, it is a whole lot of fun, but where it differs from uh, the outdoor game, at least especially for the uh, offense alignment is there's not a lot of twisting. Um, there's not a lot of running. So it's mostly just one-on-one pass block the entire game. So, um, and things happen a lot faster because the field is so much smaller. Like guys are right up on you. There's not going to be somebody blitzing from 10 yards away or anything like that. So really it's just about your one-on-one battles um, as far as offensive line play goes. Do you have a preference in terms of indoors or outdoors? Oh, definitely outdoor. Uh, Indoors because I love playing football, even if it's a different brand of it. And uh, help me, help me with my pass protection. Um, helping to keep my dream alive of playing football professionally still. So um, I love it, but um, definitely outdoor football is, is where my heart's at. Yeah, definitely, definitely like real football. And I, again, it's about to get hot down there. Ho- hopefully, hopefully it's not yeah. too crazy. It's going to get damn 90s in Wisconsin today. I can't even imagine what, or not today, this week. Can't imagine what it's going to be like down there. Oh, yeah, it's going to be bad. Um, yeah. Good thing you got the running clock now. There it is. Uh, we'll finish up with Electric Owl 3 from Reddit. He's asked this a couple times now. He's getting aggressive, so he needs to know the answer to this. What's your thoughts on pineapple on pizza? Not going to lie to you. I'm a big pineapple on pizza fan guy. Uh, Definitely. Not me. No. You got... <laughs> I don't like pineapple in general, though. So, okay. I mean, okay. Yeah, it's not a combo but- thing. It's. <laughs> I can't do it. Can't do it. I understand. I won't fault you for it. <laughs> so uh, this week, you guys have been playing on Saturdays. You are now switching to Sunday. You're playing the Philadelphia Stars, 12 p.m. Eastern on NBC. So people definitely tune in for that. Should be a good one. Jordan, anything else you want to talk about before we get out of here? Uh, no, I'm good. You got, if you're not going to be at the game, make sure you tune in. Um, 12 p.m. Eastern and uh, versus Philly. It should be a good one. Definitely get to 5-0 and for the first half of the season. That'll be uh, feeling pretty good to remind people top two from each division or conference, whatever you want to call it, advance to the playoffs. Moving to 5-0 and is going to be a big deal. So hopefully you guys can get it done. Again, Sunday, 12 p.m. Eastern, NBC. I'm Zach Bruner. Thank you, Jordan, for joining us once again. And we'll see you next week. All right.